And if you look at this, in September 2022, Ignatius Bafoy, who employment and labor relations minister, quoted as saying government had created 5.3 million jobs. This was in September 2022. Then the vice president talks about 2.3 million jobs. So whose report should we believe? To the vice president or the employment relations minister? Alfred Apia is a data analyst. He's been crunching the numbers on this matter. Also a data scientist, also policy analyst joining us. Uh, Alfred, it's good to have you join us here on Ghana tonight. First of all, take a look at what is on the screen there, Alfred, and, 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 and what the Employment Relations Minister is talking about and what the Vice President has also put out there. But you've heard that, for instance, the, the Vice Chair of the Manifesto Committee of the MPP, Kujopon Kuma, has been consistent in defending this position by, by the Vice President. How does that strike you? Oh, thanks. Thanks, Alfred, for having me. And I think, you know, it's interesting that the, the vice chair mentions the SNP data because actually one of the sources that I was going to use was SNP data to show that the SNP data does not match the data that they are talking about. Part of my issue is that um, we try to use different sources. So remember that this is government talking about its own source. Government or the politicians are providing their own job numbers, but we also have publicly available information. So through the Ghana Stats Service, through the Controller and Accountant General, through the Ghana Revenue Authority, through tax data. So what I've been trying to do is to show, you know, could we really use those sources to, to be able to uh, say that the, the government has created 2.3 million jobs? So that's what I'm hoping to be able to show um, here, that the, the really the point of deviation is that these numbers that the politicians are throwing around don't match up with the ones that we have from all the other public sources that we know. And I see, so, so the SNIT data, as you have it, and as we're seeing, cannot support that claim of uh, 2.3 million jobs created. Yeah, because the SNIT data, and I'll show it, so the SNIT data that they're using, it's basically when somebody registers on SNET, right? Um, and then it's assumed that the person is a new job that has been created. But what is important is not just people registering on SNET. What is important is to show that, you know, if the job is the job, the supposed job that has been created is sustainable, is that people are continuing to contribute to SNET. So SNET has another data called active contributors, right? And so that should be, if you look at uh, the change in that, that's where you will see how many people are actively contributing to SNET. That will give you a better sense of the jobs rather than registration. Because remember, SNET has also been on campaigns trying to get people to register for SNET. So it could even be people that are already working that are signed up for, straight, uh, for SNET. So, so if you go ahead and just use the SNET numbers, you are, you are thinking that you're creating jobs, but really you're also looking at people that are already have jobs and just signing up to register on SNET. And so, so here's what I want us to do, Alfred. So since the vice president made reference to data, and that's the data I've been, I've been put out now, and to put it on record that that data is from the Excel spreadsheet that the vice president put out. But then I want us to make specific reference to verifiable data that our viewers can also Google and look out for. For instance, the controller and control digital data. If you have a GRA data, you can share with me. If also there is data from, for instance, SNET that you can share with me. And let's do a data-driven position or, or challenge of the vice president's position on this matter. Why do you think that that claim of 2.3 million jobs cannot be the case from where you sit? Sure. So I'm going to share my screen and then I can, I can show you. So um, like I mentioned, so the number that we've been told is 2.3 million jobs. So we're going to um, uh, we're going to look at that and try to use these different sources to see if we can get something close to that. Um, and from the way the messaging has been going around, they talk about public and private sector. So uh, they, they specifically said they've excluded jobs created from planting for, for food and jobs because, you know, obviously a lot of those jobs will be just in agriculture. And so they exclude them. But the sources that I'm going to use today, um, we have the Ghana Statistical Service data. Uh, we have data from the Controller and Accountant General Department. And uh, when this conversation started and people were citing the Controller and Accountant General Department, people were saying that some, you know, people, pro-government people were saying that the CAGD, CAGD doesn't uh, pay everybody. And so um, there are some public service jobs that are 
that are outside of that. And that is true. But I would also show that even when you take into account the ones that are outside of the, the core uh, public service, they still doesn't add up to the numbers that we are being told. I'll look, I'll also talk briefly about GRA data because again, the expectation is that if people are getting jobs, and these jobs are, you know, you know, good jobs. They or good, at least good quality jobs. They, we should be seeing some them paying taxes, right? That should be reflected in the revenue data as well. And then also SNET, which we talked about. So briefly, um, two sources because the Ghana Statistical Services uses surveys a lot for for some of these stuff, right? And so in 2015, there was the labor force survey that was done, and in that survey, we found that, that the total number of employed people over that time frame was um, 9.2. Nine, about 9.3 million people. Now, fast forward to 2022, we the, we now have what is called the Annual Household um, Income and Employment Survey. And that one in 2022, um, it was it showed that about 11 million, about 10.96 million people were employed. So, and the reason I'm using 2022 instead of 2023 is because the, the number that the vice president has been saying, it's actually referring to 2022, from 2017 to 2022. So when you look at the breakdown that he gives, is from 2017 to 2022. So that's why I'm using 2020, so we can compare. Now, between those two time periods, the total jobs is 1.6 million uh, based on the Star Services data. But remember that this is all jobs, right? Be uh, and the, it, this is important because the Ghanaian economy is largely informal, right? And so a lot of the jobs are in the informal sector. But this one, this job growth that I'm showing you over those two time periods is 1.6 million. It's all jobs, regardless of the level of formality. But the vice president was specifically referring to public and private sector, which will largely be four more jobs. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show is that, you know, the whole idea of the public and the private sector. So if you look at this screen, this is, again, this is data from the Ghana Stat Service. Um, and what they do is they break down the jobs, right, number of employment by sector, right, by the specific sector. So you can see public into bracket government, uh, semi-public institutions, private formal. And I want to really focus on just the first three columns because the other part is like private informal. That is a lot of informal job. That is what, that's not what the vice president was talking about. And, uh, you know, people in agriculture and all of that would be in the private informal. But when you look at the public sector, you know, over the four quarters from in 2022, the average is about 690,000 jobs, right? And then when you look at the private formal, it's also around 940,000. Now, don't get confused because this is the total, this is as of, right? So it's not like this is just the jobs for 2022. This is anybody, people, I come to you, I ask you, are you employed? It doesn't matter what time you were, you were what time period you were employed, right? So this could be people that were working before this government came to power. This could be people that were working before 2017. And this could be people that are also in that period. But this is total. So even just looking at that, the number of people that are working in the public service is about 700,000. That is nowhere close to the 1.4 million that is being bundled around. Because even if, if we assume that everybody that's working right now is even working, it's, it's, it's a job that was created by the current government, that would not add up. And then the same thing, the private sector number, the nine, they say it's about 900,000, and here the average is 900,000. But again, remember that this is based on people that are working regardless of when they started working. So this doesn't add up to that number. So that is one source um, that I wanted to show. Then the other part is the controller and counter general department, because remember, they talk about public sector, right? So the public service, the way how it works is there are people that are paid by the controller, but there are also some organizations like the Ghana, Arm, Ghana Armed Forces, the Ghana Police Service, uh, they get a subvention from government to do their own payroll. So the government doesn't manage their, uh, the controller doesn't manage their payroll for them, but the controller will transfer money to them. And I, 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 my suspicion is that it has something to probably do with like security and all of that. So the, 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 the army and the police service, they manage their own, um, their own uh, payroll. So that is the, when you look at this, table that is the what the subvention is but really when even between the two it's about 890,000 as of 2022 right as of December 2022 and you would see that the mechanized or the people that have you know the government they have it's about 700,000 which would be very similar to what we're seeing for from the staff service as also, also as of 2022 also one thing I should I wanted to mention is that even the subvention the number is big because it also includes national service people right and technically national service is not really employment if you if you if you want to look at the the the, the full the, you know like the definition of that it's not really considered employment really and so so that is the so you will see that between the controller 
and the Ghana Star Service. These numbers are far off. Like even the controller payroll, when we include the subvention, it's about 890,000. That is way, way less than the 1.4 million that the government is talking about. And even if we ask, this is also assuming that everybody that is to the controller payroll right now is was employed by the current government, which doesn't add up because you know that people were working way before the government came, came, came to power. Um, so when, when I made this point, when others made this point, uh, the ruling party people said, well, controller doesn't pay everybody, there are also other ones. So I was like, okay, well, SIGA, um, the state interest and government, um, state's interest and government authority, they also do publish this, um, this uh, uh, state of, state of uh, um, public enterprise. Like they basically have these reports that they do, right? And so when you look at this chart, you see on the top, uh, on the bottom left corner, there's the number of employees by specified entities. So looking at state-owned enterprises, ECG, Cocoa Board, all those state enterprises, right? Uh, even this one even includes uh, the joint, what is called the joint uh, venture companies, like things like Airtel, Tigo, Telesel, those are all like, uh, it's a partnership between the government of Ghana and some private people, right? And so this, of all of that, their total staff strength is 68,000. Right. So that will not explain again, that will not explain the gap in the public service. So we keep asking the question, what numbers are, is the government relying on? Because these numbers from from government's own data, looking at all trying to cover all the bases doesn't add up. First, we can't even match the one point four million from public service before now. Before then, we can say, OK, what about the ones that were working before uh, before the current government um, uh, came to power? So we cannot really explain that. Um, tax data is the same thing. So, because if people are working, you should see that they'll be paying taxes. So, one of the exercises that I quickly did was um, I took the government's data from 2019 and then 2022 because I didn't have the tax data prior to 2017 and uh, right. I didn't have the tax data for 2017 and 2018. So, what I did was let's look at the difference between 2019 and 2022. Mm -hmm. How many tax how many additional tax payers have been added to the system right mm -hmm. so when i did that what i was saying was that about 40 percent of people uh, that are supposed to have been a part of this well uh cre jobs created by the government are not showing up on the tax tax and, system and, and so, that's a very instructive point that you make alfred uh, there because then if number of jobs have been created and we're not seeing that reflected on, on gra does that mean they are not paying taxes or the GRA's drive to get people paid taxes is also one that could be made, a reference could be made to that as well. But then I see that there's some inconsistency in the data, and you, I pointed that earlier. 5.3 million by the Minister for uh, Labor and Employment, and then the, the, the Vice President, 2.3 million. If we have to go by the Vice President's 2.3 million, just for the sake of this conversation, this was first made in 2022, as you have just uh, stated as well. So... Between then and now, is that to say that over the last almost three years, no jobs have been created? Yeah, no, that, that's a very good observation that you're making there because the 2.3 hasn't changed. It's always 2.3 million, right? But because it, so the vice president said 2.1, and then when he provided the data, the data actually saw, showed it was 2.3. And so, um, yeah, good point. As for 2022, so 2023, no job has been created, basically. And then 2024 to date to August, there hasn't been any, any jobs created. So that, that should put into perspective, you know, how these numbers are coming about. And, and we don't have any way of verifying it because, again, it's just an Excel spreadsheet that the vice president said. So what we can do is that we can look at all these other sources, right? All these other sources that should give us an idea of how the labor market is looking. And then we can compare and say that because, you see, when I did the CAGD and the Ghana Star Service, they were close. They were close to each other. But when you look at the rest, it's like, no, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. That doesn't add up at all. So where are the jobs? And that's the question I keep asking. Where are the jobs that are supposed to, that have supposedly been created by the current government? Where are the jobs? And I'm sure that's a fundamental question on the minds of many people because it was evident beyond reasonable doubt. I don't think there'll be any question of doubt per se. And to the extent that, Alfred, you keep consistently making the point that this is coming from the vice president's press sheet and not, for instance, the Ghana Fiscal Service will give us the number of jobs created or, or the rate of unemployment as well, as we have seen. Alfred, appreciate your time. And, and trust that, look, we, we're going to have a bigger platform to have an extensive conversation on this matter here on TV3. So, Alfred, I appreciate you for, for this work. Thank you so much uh, for joining us here on, on Ghana Tonight. Alfred Appiah is a data scientist and policy analyst.
joining us here on Ghana tonight. And this is a matter that we're going to continue having conversations on in our various platforms.